everyone, and welcome to the Quick Cast. My name is Becca Syme. I am an author success coach with so many years of helping authors. I've coached more than 6,000 individual writers in my tenure um, as an author success coach. And the goal of this channel is to talk about what to quit, what to keep, and what to question in your author career as a way to help minimize the overwhelm that we feel in this industry and to help us have author careers for the rest of our lives. So we are into the series of primers, quick cast primers, and we're trying to talk about concepts that will help us practice author alignment or will help us quit, keep, and question. And today we have gotten to the keep portion of the primers where we're going to talk about strengths. Now on this channel, because I am a certified Clifton Strengths coach, when we talk about strengths that have names, like they have names like strategic or individualization or learner, then we're talking specifically about the Clifton Strengths. But we don't just talk about strengths with a capital S around here. We talk about strengths with a small s as well. Because whether you have taken the Clifton Strengths test or not, whether you know what you're top five are or your full 34, which are um, phrases that we throw around a lot. And those are specifically related to the Clifton Strengths metric. We practice strengths methodology with a small s because when success psychology was first being studied and specifically by Donald Clifton, who was the originator of the Clifton Strengths metric of the test itself and also the theory of the Clifton Strengths. But when this was first introduced to me, the way that my trainers talked about it was something that resonated with what I knew to be true about having tried to help friends of mine and having tried to help myself be successful in the past. And the thing that I would always run into is when I would tell someone, well, if I could do it, anybody could do it. Because for me, this is the easiest thing that I've ever done before, right? I have a cluster of talents that makes me really good at collecting information. That might be going out in search of information. It might be retaining information. It works a little differently for everybody, but specifically that cluster of talents is all about the resourcefulness and the helpfulness of my information. And because I have this, the easiest thing for me to do ever, if you tell me that there's a resource that exists somewhere, I will go and find it. I'll collect it. I'll read it. I'll probably retain a majority of it. Um, and I'll be able to give a lot of that back because that's something that is really easy for me. So when I used to give people advice about how to be helpful in particular situations, um, especially because I used to work in the nonprofit world where we were trying to resource people. Um, and we would say, well, if, if a kid comes in asking for this thing, um, just tell them to go find the nearest whatever you know system or whatever situation or whatever organization. Because I knew as a kid, I would have just been able to go and find those things. And again, I talked about use the word just Whenever someone says, well, just do this, that's partly because the assumption they're making in their head is this is so easy for me. It should also be easy for you because this is just something everyone can do because it comes so quickly to me. And what I realized when I first started studying the Clifton Strengths metric and specifically success psychology, the way that Dr. Clifton talks about it, I realized that what comes easily to me doesn't come easily to everyone and it shouldn't. Because it is so specific to me, that ability to do something in the way that I do it is something that I can't expect that everyone can do. So I either have to give them the resource and like look for it myself. And this was what I had learned right in the past was I would either have to know all of the organizations or all of the potential places kids could find things or where the resources could be found. Or like I would have to keep all of those myself, or I would have to tell them how to go looking for it and then also provide them with the impetus to go looking for it. And what I found often was it was the easiest thing for me to just collect the resources myself and then give it to them. Um, but when I started learning about strengths, what became really fascinating to me is that when I would just say, well, just go looking for this thing. And my trainer was saying, but there are capacities that you have that are so easy and instinctive for you. You don't realize that other people don't have them. Um, and the phrase that he used a lot was that common sense 
is often a signal of strength. When you think something is common sense, it often means that there's a particular wiring in your head that makes you able to think that way that other people can't think that way. Um, and that blew my mind a lot. And so this idea that when Dr. Clifton was studying these clusters of successful behavior, he was going out and looking at people who were already identified as being successful, right? So it was the, you know, the top, the, the phrasing that we always use is, you know, the best NBA basketball players, the best math teachers, the best housekeepers at Disneyland. So there was no expectation that you had to be successful by anyone else's metric, except the people who were inside of your industry, who would they have said was the most successful. And then Dr. Clifton was studying those people and asking them, how did you do this? What talents do you have that allow you to do this thing in this way? Right? So there was a decades long study that led to the formation of the Clifton Strengths program because he was so obsessed with figuring out on a minute level exactly what those differences between everyone being successful in different ways meant. And what they found was your capacity to be successful was so exponentially high in the areas where you had strengths that applying yourself in those areas would yield significantly better results than in other areas. And when we talk about the Clifton strengths, which are the words, right? Strategic individualization, learner input, responsibility achiever, like those words represent a cluster of traits that a whole lot of successful people talked about in exactly the same way. And all of those people who had those traits had all of them together. Right. So people with a dominant input strength, which is my number one, would all talk about being successful at the same type of thing. And the researchers realized that these traits commonly occurred together and they often rose and fell as a group also. And so that's where this concept of the Clifton strengths comes from, is this collection of the research into successful people. And the reason this part is so important to me is that this isn't just some random person who did three months of research and said, I think there's four kinds of people and here's what they are, or even did, you know, eight months of research or whatever. This is someone who did a longitudinal study who was very interested in a broad amount of people and why there were patterns and overlaps that were on one hand so different, right? There's 34 different collections of these traits, but also that when those trait clusters appeared together, they would appear consistently in person after person after person, and they would use the same language to talk about them. And what this means to me as someone who's trying to help other people be successful, is that when you can understand those areas where you have exponential capacity to be better than other people at something, it helps you be more successful yourself, but it also helps us be better at understanding why other people might not be as successful at something as we are. Why is it easier for those of us who've been studying strengths for a long time to assimilate how people are different and why they might be different. It's because we're adding to our skills of the ability to tell the difference between unique people and to attribute different types of success patterns to those individual differences. That is a strength, right? And so the ability to do that and, and so often what we focus on because we have this ability is like, oh, well, let me just let that ability sit there or let's assume everyone can do this. So it's not that big of a deal that I'm good at it. And then let's focus on all these places that where I don't have capacity and go and force myself to get better at those places. But what we're finding is, and, and not just us in our research with authors, but also what Dr. Clifton found was that when people were not as talented at something, it took them so much longer to increase their capacity and they still couldn't reach the same capacity that people could who had natural talent who applied the same uh, time and intention. And we use the speed reader example a lot where they did an experiment with a group of speed readers and they split them up into two different groups by their average word speed 
And the first group started off at 90 words per minute, went through a speed reading class and ended up at 150 words a minute. And then the second group, the naturally talented or naturally gifted group started off at 350 words a minute outside. So they were above average already to start off with. They went through the same class as the first group and they ended up at 3000 words a minute. And that number often makes people kind of stop and, and pay attention because the difference between 90 to 150 and 350 to 3000 is so significant. And it didn't have any speed reading training before. So what was the difference, right? The difference was the natural capacity. They started off naturally talented when they started off at 350 with no training and they did not start off as talented. So that ability to have that exponential capacity for development means a couple of things. One is when you have a weakness in that area, in an area where you have a natural capacity, you have been working at it to have it work against you at an exponential level. So that's an important place. And we'll talk more about the concept of basements about these later. But also when you have a higher capacity, a higher natural capacity, it can often get you more places that you would be wanting to get by developing skills in other ways. And, and we'll talk again, we'll talk more about this in other primers, but it's so important to understand where this basic concept of strengths comes from. It comes from the idea that you can't be good at everything. And it comes from the idea that, well, so that you can't be excellent at everything and that you shouldn't try to be. And this goes against some of what I think a lot of people who are dominant learners, especially, um, or who are really good at learning new skills, it goes against a lot of what those people want to believe because they want to believe that everything is equally accessible to everyone. And so they encourage people to spend a lot of time developing skills where they're just going from 90 to 150 and 90 to 150 when they could be spending time going from 350 to 3000. And that's where I would rather see them spend time, especially because again, when you have weaknesses in those areas, it's more important important to work on them because they are working against you exponentially also. But for now, I want us to focus on this primer about strengths and why we use strengths in alignment in particular is that if we could get you to a place by using a talent that you already have a high natural capacity in, you bet we're going to do that. And I'm also not going to try to work against a natural capacity that you have without talking about the amount of time it's going to take to do that work because of the amount of time it's taken to get you to the level of strength that you currently have in that place. So when we talk about small s strengths, like the concept of strength theory has a small s because it's all about trying to focus more time on the areas where you have higher natural capacity because being a standout is so important in this industry. Being able to be really good at something is important, but it's also important, small s strengths, right? It's also important to know that when other people are giving you advice about something, they are often relying on a skill that they have where they're saying, but if I can do it, anyone can do it. And if you ever hear anyone say that, that is the biggest red flag about not everyone can do that thing though. That is a natural capacity that they have developed to a point where it is the 3000 words a minute level, right? Which is the top 1% level. So it seems more common sense to them. And again, common sense is another flag where I would say like, oh, mm, but that's not the same for everyone, right? And this all boils down to the fact that we are so different and that those differences matter more than anything in how we make decisions. But you, if you haven't listened to the author alignment primer, um, go back and listen to that one because that is a hugely important concept in how we have seen success happen in this industry. Okay. That's all the time we have because I promised people these primers would be short. And obviously I could talk about this for a long time and have in other places. We will continue to talk about strengths, both small S and big S throughout the course of these primers. But for now, let's focus on what to quit, what to keep and what to question. We will be back with more primers in the future. I hope everyone has a good week. 
Thank you so much for watching and listening to this channel. And we will see you in the next episode. Bye, everybody. Mm -hmm.